Wow. And we're back for hour three. Shall we continue, Damn, boys and ladies? Yeah. Let's go, Scott. Pick it on up with uh, Rye in the office. Mm. So, Rye, you get you make your way into the office. They let you in there. They tell you that you can sit and you can wait for him to come back. And as I just said a few moments ago, it's going to take a couple of hours for him to get back there because he's handling, I don't know, stuff. Mm -hmm. While you're sitting there, time passes. First couple minutes feel like ages. First half hour feels like forever. And time continues to pass as Rye, like, probably sits there waiting and then stands up. Maybe what paces a bit, leans on a wall. Yeah. Eventually starts kind of like getting really impatient because like she's has this like internal struggle that's going on with everything that's happened recently. Yeah. And the worst situation right now is to be left alone with your thoughts, which is yeah. what she finds herself in. So yeah. Whenever something large like this happens where you're in some sort of, you know, turmoil, it's exactly like you just said. So this goes on for so long that your thoughts, which aren't just your thoughts, your thoughts are almost like screaming out. And so finally something responds and says, Rye, you seem lost, says a very familiar female voice that you haven't heard in quite a while. Actually, the last time you heard it was many months ago when you were still in that tower. Mm. Do you respond? Do you say anything? Or do you just kind of like think in agreement? Um, just like a, there's like a pause. Yeah, she doesn't say anything. I wasn't expecting to hear the voice, but there mm -hmm. it is. And I think Rai like closes her eyes briefly. Mm -hmm. And when she opens them again, she's so, in. So you, what happens, yeah, yeah, I actually take over from here. So she's in the office, like you said. However, uh, immediately after she comes to in the office, she, like you said, she closes her eyes. When she opens them back up, she looks around the room and things have changed slightly. There is this smell. It almost smells like iron. It almost smells like rust. There's this heat to the room. There's this weight to it. The air itself is extremely thick. Ah, oh, and then the wave of sulfur comes in behind it. Oh my God, the wave of sulfur is just, it's almost unbearable, but for some reason you seem to, uh, it's almost sweet smelling to you. Like, oh, the pungence of, of but then you almost notice a, a familiarity with that that sulfur smell that you, there's something in the back of your mind that, that doesn't mind it, actually might even like it. Like I said, this bit of a sweet smell to it. Looking around, you are inside the office. The office does have the windows in it that look out to the town below, but no longer do you see outside those windows into town. As a matter of fact, part of the wall behind you has been completely chopped away by an iron wall. And then outside the windows, you see more iron walls completely uh, encasing this area that you are, the whole place, just this pungent smell, this heavy, warm, uh, uh, dry heat, like thick air. Um, and the iron all around you. And as you're kind of like looking around and taking in this this like dark presence that is the room or is this area that you're in, uh, seeming to materialize out of nowhere, uh, not dropping through the ceiling, not stepping through a wall, but seeming to materialize out of nowhere. Um, Batman, uh, Batman style. <laughs> Batman style is, uh, is the woman that you'd seen before and she really is beautiful. And so there she is, standing uh, before you, uh, with her arms crossed in front of her, and uh, looking at you with, uh, uh, it looks like it might actually be a concerned face. Like, she actually has a face of concern. Hmm. Rai um, is surprised to see her, and um, she kind of, like, looks her up and down, and without saying anything, like, turns back to the window. Mm -hmm. um, which is kind of a pointless task, because there's not really anything outside anymore. It's like an iron wall, but um yeah she goes back to the window again just to make sure she is where she thinks she is mm -hmm. um and she is she's in this uh you're not sure what it is but you've only seen this once before and it was the first time that you had seen the, the last time you had seen this woman you've spoken to her several times but this is when that thing that was in your mind uh the thing that was in those amulets that you once wore um were removed from you and the voices that were in your head before were replaced by her voice. Mm. And um, and so here she is standing before you and she says, Rye, you seem to be in a bit of turmoil. What is it? What is 
What is eating away at you? Why are you so concerned with... And she gestures just out. Them. Uh, without looking back, Fry just says, They're the only people I know. They're friends, yes. But why do you seem so... distraught? Are you not happy with what you've done? Maybe they're not the people I knew. There's something else now. Are you concerned with what it is that Thonk has been getting on with? Not just Thonk, they're all okay with it. Did you expect much more from Grauman? Kinda. Grauman's a, uh, he's dumb. He was born and bred to to kill, and seeing death does not disturb him. You know of the tribe that he's from. He's told you stories. I always knew Thunk was bad, but I stayed, I guess, to protect Addo, and I feel like it didn't work. You're concerned about where it is that Otto's conscience is going, where it is his his soul is pointing. Right nods without looking back, yeah. She just nods. Why is it that Otto's soul is so precious to you? Why his? You don't look to save anybody else's. I'm not speaking of lives. I'm speaking of the nature of who he is. Is it just that sense of familiarity? Is that all it is? Familiarity, morality. Otto has chosen a path. He's not told you of it yet, has he? Shakes ahead. Otto has chosen a path, and that path is going to walk along some lines. That path has a chance of transcending him to being beyond just a plaything. And he can potentially succeed at this, but he needs to walk that path for that to happen. Now, I can tell you, I don't give two fucks of Otto's path. He can walk it or he can fall from it. His soul can be saved or it can be lost. That doesn't matter. But what you should know is if Otto does walk that path, he's going to need friends. He's going to need friends to help him, whether it be of decisions of morality or situations he finds himself in. And your being there will probably be a good thing to assist him. If you're not there, who else will be? If you're concerned with the morality, your leaving would leave him in the clutches of Thonk and, and his games. What does he it think about this? About me? Oh, I see. Your path is about to begin, Rai. You just had to learn a little first. If there's nothing that can be said about the time that you've spent with your friends, it's you've learned some things this side, that side, how to handle this situation, how to overcome that. You're becoming better. Think back when you were in that, oh, what was that godforsaken city? Whatever that shithole was, when you were there, when it, as you so kindly call it, first came to you, when it first came to you, Compared to now, how have you changed from a scared little girl rummaging through the garbage trying to find something to eat to the woman that you are and the power that you wield? Rise like staring at a palm as, as she's saying this. You've discovered powers that were given to you directly from him and to others that you found along the way as well. And what do I call him? I don't know anything. Many of us call him master. Your relationship with him is a little different. 
You yes. have purpose. And as I said, your path is about to begin. You're, you're almost coming to a point where, where you've ripened enough that you can be plucked. Poor choice of words. Well, you are just a mortal, and so therefore a tasty little treat to the rest. All right, I get the picture. So I should just stick this out, basically? That's your decision. Your path will eventually lead you to where you need to one way or the other. You know where you need to go. You feel it. And you're being pulled there. Whether if you drag your friends along with you or if you choose to go on your own, that's your own decision. But I can tell you that they have their paths and as long as you stay with them, they'll stay mingled and you'll have your, your weight on their decisions. Otto will either succeed or fail in his task and what kind of man he is when the end comes to pass, you can be a part of or you can not. Graman may one day find his revenge or uh, one day find peace or die along the way. You can have a stake in that too. And Thonk, you dislike what he is, he does. You leave Thonk alone and he's free to roam. You stay with Thonk, you can continue to, to disrupt. Or perhaps you happen to like the games that he's playing and you assist. Whether or not you choose to be a part of their path is up to you. Walk alongside them or walk away. Okay. But where you're going, having companions, as I've said before, just like them having you, gives greater chance of success. We've discussed this near and a year ago now. Are you going to need annual pep talks? <laughs> All right. I get it. <laughs> Send me back or whatever you do. I've taken you nowhere. This is your heart. Oh, doesn't look great. It's where you belong. And um, as you kind of like look around, like probably take it aback by a bit where her saying that because you don't think it looks good at all. Uh, it all starts to fade away for you. It wasn't like before where it was like ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, and it's like uh, and like lifted in a similar way. This time it it just kind of fades away. And everything like that was behind the walls flakes apart, flakes apart. Uh, mm -hmm. like like rusts away, and uh, and uh, the the wind kind of blows it away. And um, the uh, you're back inside the world where you were before. How much time has passed is now completely lost on you. You know, it felt like fucking forever before this thing happens. And as you're standing over by the window, looking out it, uh, kind of like looking around the room for a moment to see what was happening there, and then back outside where you can really see the wall uh, disappear. You hear the door open behind you. And there, standing in the doorway, uh, looking at you, uh, is Talik. He says nothing as he stands in the doorway, just staring uh, at you. And your back is currently turned to him, but you can feel his presence. And you, like I said, you heard him. Mm. Does Rai react or does she wait? Uh, she waits. Okay. After a few moments pass, he says, Rai, I didn't expect to find you here in my office. I was told, coming down the hall, but Otto is performing. Are you not rejoicing with him? I see it every day. <laughs> he, he actually will chuckle a bit to that. Like, it's, it's one of those things where something can be fucking amazing, but eventually you become desensitized to it. Mm. Um, and so uh, he will shut the door, and as he walks across the room, he'll ask, Drink? No, thank you. He doesn't uh, pour himself one either. Quill, ink, and paper. Um, he stops immediately when you say that uh, and kind of like looks at you for a few moments. You've still not turned around to look at him, have you? Uh, no. Okay. He stares at you for a few moments and then his direction turns and he goes elsewhere. You hear drawers opening, you hear things moving around. And eventually he does put them all on the, uh, he puts them all on the desk. And he stands by them, like with his hand still on the parchment. Looks to you, doesn't say anything. Okay. Um, Rai just starts writing on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. um, and there's like this, I'd say like an awkward two minutes of silence. And all you hear is like the scribbling on the parchment. Um, and when she's done, she <sighs> blows on the ink and folds it. 
and um, drips some some ink on the phone, and she hands the paper to him, and she, yeah, she says, "Open this when we leave." Do you intend to stay in town for long? Not long. You've done a great deal, of, a great service for my town. I, I will not break my word. After you leave, a day's time? Sure. A day's time. Is there something I can do for you, Rye? I'm better. No. Thank you. Well, I'm glad that you're here. I don't have to come finding you, and uh, I haven't heard of Thonk leaving of the cave yet. And I haven't seen Grom, and I haven't heard him coming back to town yet either. I, again, I do know Otto's performing, and you're obviously here. So do you mind if I give this to you instead? Sure. What is it? Um, he goes over into a room where there's a small safe, and he opens it up, and he pulls out, like, a small chest, and puts it on the safe, shuts the thing, and locks it, and he hoists it up and brings it over and places it down on the table, uh, on the desk between the two of you. And he says, I spoke with the mayor to confirm the reward that you and yours deserve for what you've done for the town. Here it is. And thank you again. You've you've saved us and our people. Right, nods. And um, she picks up the chest, it's heavy. It's heavy. Kind of like drops in her arms. And she's like, um, I'll be sure to pass this on. Thank you. And, uh, you know, he holds up a note between his fingers and he uh, places it down on his desk and puts something on top of it. Okay. Cool. Okay. And then uh, as you turn to leave the office, he'll actually make his way around the desk and go over and open the door for you to make sure that you don't struggle, with, you know, okay. uh, yeah. unheroically. And uh, and you can make your way out. She gives him like a grateful nod and then mm-hmm. kind of like lugs the chest down the stairs and out into the street. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, uh, makes for the tavern. Awesome. Uh, and so you do exactly that. You make for the tavern and uh, and find your way um, there. Um, so uh, when you go to the tavern, you can see that Otto has finished performing and has started drinking. So there he is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Goes past oh, him. Just, just so you know, that chest that you're like, really struggling with um uh because that thing does weigh uh over 80 pounds maybe upwards 90 pounds which is a considerable amount for poor rye to carry that's a fuck ton of weight um a couple of guards because he does gesture to them um offer to help carry that for you or with you wherever okay. it is that you're going or they can just give you some sort of like cart with a donkey or something to pull it across town okay that's good because that's nearly her body weight so yeah mm. yeah it's a it's a lot. So, uh, yeah. the cart with donkey or guards help carrying it for you? We'll do guards. Okay. That sounds less less troublesome. Okay. So, two guards will carry it to the tavern with you. You can gesture up to the room, and they can just put it up in the room that you guys are all sharing, and then they leave the tavern. Well, okay. they'll stick around to listen to the talent. Oh, Otto's not performing. They leave. Although, I must have noticed Rye come in with guards carrying a massive chest full of something. It's a decent It's a massive. It's, you know, one it person depends, could carry it. Depends, it. Yes. depends how buried in your beer you were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, your perception with disadvantage. Yeah, my beer, I was. Yeah, yeah d- right. disadvantage. You know, oh, disadvantage. All right, my yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. There you go. Yeah, you don't notice. I don't notice. All right. You don't notice. You saw guards come in, but you didn't. You didn't see the chest full stuff. Yeah. All right. Okay. Right wants to go up to the room and open the chest. Sure, sure, sure. So you follow up. Uh, you guys notice each other, but whatever. You up there. You open the chest. It is filled with gold and gems and stuff like that. It right. is riches. Okay. She closes the chest and shoves it under the bed. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it is a smaller one, so you know it's it's filled mm. with a bunch, and they're neatly stacked, golden gems and all that. Okay, so you go back under. Uh, you shove, shove it under the bed, and uh, head back down. Mm-hmm. Okay, you do so. And uh, she pulls a, pulls the stool up mm-hmm. next to Otto and like waves down the bartender for a drink. Otto's okay. just staring at his glass, kind of fingering around the rim of it. How'd it go? The show kind of sucked. Show with you? Sucked? Yeah. 
Nah. Yes, a 17 sucks for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, most bars would be like, yeah, I got a 17. <laughs> <laughs> it sucked. Yeah. I just uh, went triple platinum. Hmm. I was just like, really self pity party here. I just wasn't feeling it. How come? Oh, well, some guards came in. I don't, I don't think Bill made it. You don't know him. He was a guard. I remember him. You do? Yeah. I was in disguise, remember? Oh, yeah. Why'd you do that? I was kind of like giving her a look of just defeat. I guess I wanted people to feel more comfortable. I don't know. Takes a sip. Right, kind of like motions to herself. And she's like, I'm not the most comfortable inducing person. You know? She like points to the horns. <laughs> Otto kind of smiles a little bit. Makes sense. Where'd you go? Just now. <sighs> to see Tarek. Oh, about what? I left him a note. I okay. said, open it when we go. What did it say? The truth. All of it? No. Just what's to come. Hmm. Otto takes another sip. We should probably leave soon, though. Nods again. What's Grumman? I need to go to Silvery Moon. Okay. You know Mr. of it? No. Will you come with me? Yeah. He smiles. Good. You got that, uh, the thingy, right? You can speak to Thunk. Uh, oh, yeah. He digs in his pocket. So you can just, like, tell him where we're going in a few days. You, you want to leave now? Tomorrow? Um, what about Thunk? You could tell him where we're going. <laughs> no, I thought, oh... <laughs> he's drunk. No, Otto's, Otto's a sad. He's in a sad, drunken state. It makes sense. Yeah. I got him yeah. mixed up. I got him mixed oh. up. <laughs> All the orcs, they look, they they, they look the same. We're not gonna okay. go without Grumman. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I, uh, I sent a message to Grumman. I let him know. No, no, it's a thunk. Grumman doesn't have a stone. Oh we're just, God. we're gonna, we're just gonna wait till Grumman shows up at the tavern. Because he okay. inevitably will. <laughs> <laughs> Except he won't. <laughs> they believe he will. So what do you, what do you yeah. say to Thonk? 25 words or less. Go. 25 words or less. I tell Thonk, uh, can't wait here. We're headed to Silvery Moon in three days. Or no, sorry, in, uh, in a day. Meet us there. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Thonk, just, uh, you just get okay. Okay. Is Grumman with you? Grumman is... Oh, yeah. Hold on, hold on. So, let's rewind a second. Grumman! <laughs> yeah. Um, it's easy to follow them. They're a troop of orcs, and they're well-trained and whatnot. But so, Grumman wants to follow them, but in a different way. Yeah, I, I imagined you were okay. getting a little shysty. So, what is your tactic here? Uh, if I can, I would like to find a bird and mm -hmm. follow them that way. Mm -hmm. For three <laughs> weeks? Well, Grandma just wants to see where they're headed. You like, know where they're headed. Dark could you, could you do me a favor? Could you roll me a survival check? Mm -hmm. <laughs> could you roll me a perception check? Okay. So you're looking around for a bird. Like, you see them going, and you're, you, you know they're getting ready or whatever. So uh, they start trekking out. 
And while they start trekking out, you're making your way, following behind them a considerable amount, but looking for birds so you can follow them the best way possible, right? Um, and as you're looking around, you do in fact see a uh, a bird flying overhead. Uh, it looks like it's in. Uh, it looks like an eagle um, flying overhead, swooping around, uh, scouting the the land. Okay, Grandma's gonna call out to it. Um, how do you call out to it? Well, first he thinks. Whole... First he thinks it might be his friend, his Sir Fancy Feathers, because mm -hmm. Grandma Grandma's not so smart. Actually, wait, hold on. Oh yeah, he totally thinks it's Sir Fancy Feathers. Uh, so he called out to him, expecting him to come back. Gotcha. Okay. And um, uh, you call out for the, the thing to come to you. So you just, uh, you know, Sir Fancy Feathers, Sir Fancy Feathers, come to me, come to me. And so you're hollering out, I assume, at the top of your lungs. Is that like the, like, ah! And do you cast Speak with Animals first? Yeah. To... He's speaking with animals. He's going to do that. Okay. Um... So you can't speak with animals and you start hollering out to this thing, which is, again, it's okay because um, you, the, the, they've already started traveling a little bit and it's not like they didn't know that you were in existence or something like that beforehand, so that's not a big deal. So um, you start being able to uh, to, to speak to them, uh, sorry, to call out and speak to it, and it starts flying closer and closer. And one of the things that you notice is that it's taking a considerable amount of time to get to you for a bird that you just hollered out to. But then as it gets closer, you notice that it's getting larger. Oh. Oh, and then as it lands, because it is traveling a considerable distance, all of a sudden what lands in front of you is no small eagle perched on a tree. As a matter of fact, what lands in front of you is a giant fucking bird whose size is larger than that of a horse and its wingspan is stretching over 30 feet at length. This thing is fucking ginormous and it's standing there before you looking at you. Uh, uh, blinking at, uh, blinking like one eye at a tie, at, uh, eye at a time at you, just kind of like staring at you. <laughs> Grumman thinks you called out to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Grumman looks at it, and he's gonna be like, "Oh, you got big." <laughs> it looks back at you, and it says, "What? You got big? What would you eat?" And then Grumman kind of goes over to it, picks up its feathers, and like kind of like looks at him, <laughs> and like is like sizing him up. It looks at you and it says, Grommin? Oh, it Wait, is. it said Grommin? Mm-hmm. Okay. So <laughs> he keeps looking at that and he's like, yes? Are you Grommin? Oh, of course I Grommin. You fancy feather, I Grommin. I was told, find Grommin. Who told you find Grommin? My snack. What what snack? I found a snack. Before I ate it, it screamed. It told me, find Grommin. Oh no. <laughs> what your snack look like? It was it was an eagle. <laughs> Grauman's like, first he's like, you ate eagle? And then Grauman's like, you ate, you ate so fancy feather? It screamed, find Grauman. <laughs> and I've never felt so compelled. I found Grauman. You were Grauman. Why was I told to find you? How do you Grauman, speak to me? Grauman's like getting really sad now. And he's like pacing back and forth. And what was the last thing you said? How, how is it that you speak to me? You speak in my language, not in yours. Grumman's like still pacing and uh, doesn't really answer right away. And, uh, keeps pacing for a little while. So there's a little bit of awkward silence. Mm -hmm. Does he just keep asking that? No, 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 not at all. It, it's just watching you pace back and forth. And because it's a bird, like as you go that way, it's like its eye kind of follows you. And then it goes, and then as you go back there, its eye kind of follows you. And it goes, because if there's anything that's more creepy than a cat, it's a bird. God, birds are creepy. Avian are so creepy. Ugh. Ugh. I don't like birds. <sighs> uh, and then Grumman stops and he's like, why you come find me if you eat Fancy Feather? It screeched at me before I ate it and I felt compelled. So I'm here. 
okay. Grumman looks at him and then looks at himself and then looks at him and is like, now what? You speak to me. How do you speak to me? I... I don't know. I kind of... It happened one day. I just able to speak to animal. I lived in a group. There were many of us. They are all dead. How'd they die? It was orcs. The eagle that I ate, it flew with the orcs. It found us, it led them to us. We killed many, it killed us. I survived. I found the eagle. It screeched at me, find Grauman, and here I am. I have nothing. My nest destroyed, my eggs smashed. My home gone. And so I search. I found you. Grauman hugs the bird. <laughs> It, it, like, tries to look down at you doing that whole, like, weird, like, actually, I actually have a hurt neck real life at the moment, so I can't even do it. But, like, it, it, like, does that weird, like, head turn thing. So it's, like, eye is, like, looking down at you. And Grumman looks and then backs up and looks at it, and he goes, I know. My family died, too. People kill them. Why this bird travel with orcs? Sorry, why this eagle travel with orcs? I don't know why he traveled with other orcs, but he traveled with me because we friends. You friends with Bird? You mean it's your slave? No. I've He's seen with... birds. I've seen birds with, with um, your kind. I've seen birds with those that walk on two legs and cannot fly. They have hoods in their eyes so they cannot see. They have chains in their legs so they cannot fly. And very often they become meals of of those that they serve. They are your slaves. They are not friends. Well, we know eat fancy feather and we know put chains or ties. He fly where he want. That why he leave and he no come back. But it makes sense then if he's, if you, if you ate him. <laughs> Grandma seems really sad. <laughs> How big is this bird? Like. Larger than that of a horse with a wingspan of over 30 feet. So it's like six foot tall or something? Like it's what? Lar larger than, than a horse. So very, very, from like beak to tail, very fucking long, like uh, eight or nine feet. Jesus. Yeah, it's really fun. Yeah, it's l large bird. sized. Yeah. Like, it's like bigger than Grauman. It's <laughs> fucking huge. Uh,. I think Grumman at this point is afraid the bird's going to try to eat him. Mm -hmm. So he's just kind of like not sure how to handle the situation other than keep talking to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and is totally forgotten what he was going to do before this. <laughs> That's funny. So uh, the bird just kind of watches you as you're like watching the bird. But then like you get this like concern. And so like you get this like, uh, like looking around and, and the bird's just watching you just never breaks eye contact it blinks one eye at a time so it well, never it's never not looking at you well grumman looks at him and he's like you want to be my friend <laughs> what does this mean to be friend with those that walk on two legs and cannot fly aside from chaining of the legs and uh, covering of the eyes so i cannot fly and i cannot see and oh. what does this mean? Does this mean that one day you will eat me? We know cover eyes, we know chain, and I know eat you. I don't think. Grauman <laughs> says. <laughs> and Grauman says, I fly. And Grauman pulls out his uh, swords that are like uh, on the sides and mm -hmm. he uh, pulls it out and he like goes and flies in the with the wing. With I always the forget, Grommet just has like a million weapons just like everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just lose track of the weapons that she he has. And he, like, God, we need to like, see a drawing of Grommet with all of his fucking everything <laughs> on him. 
Go ahead. Grumman like flies around up in circles and like just, I don't know how long, how does long does the, the thing work? I told you ages ago, I think you wrote it down. I think it's one minute. Okay. So it kind of flies around so, for a little so while. So as you start flying around and you've been flying for a little bit, it actually will jump to the air and it'll actually take to the skies above you. And that way you can catch the right kind of wind. And then as you're flying around, it's going to glide just over your head uh, uh, and glide with you. It's over your head, which is a little intimidating because it's fucking huge. Yeah. And Grauman's, a, Grauman's like, all right. And then Grauman like swoops down and, and lands as he is. It's coming and kind of like glides back down. So Grauman goes to, uh, to, goes to go and land again. And the thing is actually to make a sudden dive and swoop down, and it's actually going to dive underneath Grauman and try to catch Grauman so his legs are like on its, uh, are at the front of its wings and tries to grab him and scoop him back up. Grauman, make me a uh, acrobatics check, please. Grauman sadly does not, is not able to catch the hold oh and goes God, fumbling off so of it. <laughs> oh, you were rolling well earlier. Uh, go, goes fumbling off the back of it. And um, and uh, it doesn't sound like you come crashing into the ground and take damage or anything. Uh, you eventually do land because you do still have your wings. It's just less graceful because the bird swoops underneath you. Uh, make me, uh, I mean, do you think Raman knew what was trying to happen or do you want Raman to make like an insight check? Uh, I'll make an insight check. Or, or you can actually do animal handling if you prefer that instead. I don't know if one, which one They're both be the same. Okay, but... Okay, so with your animal handling, you know uh, you actually rolled high enough that you realized the bird was in fact trying to catch you on its back and wasn't like trying pulling to hurt some Tom Funu, yeah. Okay. Um, and as Grauman lands, he's gonna talk back up to you. He goes, "Why you try to catch me? You can fly, but you can't fly long. No, I can't fly long. I can't. Not yet, but I learn." I can fly long times. I can fly many miles. That good for you. <laughs> Grounds like, way to brag about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, realizing that you don't get what it's trying to say, it kind of does that whole, again, bird twitchiness. It's like, and like puts its oh, head down. You want yeah. me to fly with you? Yeah. Oh, so, so, um, and it just like, again, even though its head's like lower and everything, it like twitches up a little bit. And it's like, once again, doing that whole unblinking staring at you. <laughs> uh, Grumman's going to get up and, uh, get on top of the bird. So you get on the bird and, um, uh, so you climb on top of it and you try to like <laughs> nuzzle yourself into it comfy spot it's you know it's fluffy but it's bony at the same time and it's not like it's not really a big good handhold you could grab a feather but all of a sudden the muscles around it twitch and like pull the feathers out of your hand so they try to grab it. it takes a bit for you to find where it is but before you can actually get truly comfortable the thing takes off and it's starting to uh gain altitude faster than Grauman ever has been able to before and it starts to gain some ridiculous altitudes Grauman's just like Whee! <laughs> um, it is going to fly around for a considerable amount of time. And one of the things that Grauman notices as he's over uh, flying overhead and flying over the city and whatnot, the town, my apologies, and whatnot, because this thing does fly high enough overhead that it seems smaller, um, which is probably why you didn't notice it was so large before. Or maybe that, or maybe that, or because Grauman's just dumb. Um, but one of the things that you notice is that when you look past the bird's shoulder, when you lean forward and you look down at the town below, you can see it with more clarity than you have ever been able to before, can't you? I can. Like, you're looking down at that town, and, like, you would expect it to be, like, this tiny little thing down below. But you can actually, like, see it really well. You can see the people moving. You can even kind of identify who they are. You don't see Bill. Oh. Rest in peace, Bill. Um, yeah, for those of you at home, uh, huh. level six Grauman can see like, I think a thousand feet or is that, how many feet is that? I can't remember, but he can see really far in complete clarity now, which is pretty sweet. Um, 
And so you go, you go uh, flying uh, around more and more and more with this, uh, uh, with the bird for a while, and you're speaking to it. Do you choose to use your other ability with it? One um, mile. You can see up to one mile, one mile with no yeah. difficulty and able to discern five detail at something, no more than, um, but you, uh, it was and able to discern even fine details as though looking at something no more than 100 feet away from you. So if something's a mile away, you can see it as though it's only 100 feet away, which is like, fucking awesome and dim light no longer imposes disadvantage on your perception checks I meaning you can actually see in dim light better than um thunk can <laughs> all right um yeah i guess i'm like looking down and i see everything do i see anyone i recognize like any of my close friends uh not at the moment not not right now not over in the town because one's hiding inside of a, a, a place and so one's playing. Thonk and his group. If you choose to head the other direction and start trying to f- go and find them, you, in fact, will might be able to find them, but that now you're going to have to start kicking up the hunt for them. You're going to mm-hmm. have to roll me a survival check. Okay. Unless um, you choose not to. Well, I guess Grum is distracted now at this point, because now he's, like, trying to befriend this bird. So mm-hmm. he's probably going to hang out with the bird. Okay, no problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, I imagine at some point in time you do ask the bird its name. Yeah. Uh, in which case it responds. I imagine like we're eating, so Grauman like goes and find. And he's like, "Oh, I find something. One second. And he like finds it, like a giant. What do what do giant eagles eat? <laughs> Apparently, smaller eagles. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, prey. It eats prey. Like right. what, whatever's down there. So it's it, this thing's fucking huge. So yeah, not I a assume rabbit. that I find like a boar, like a giant boar, and I bring sure. it back. And then Grauman just takes like a leg of it, but gives the rest to the bird. So while you guys are on the grounds, you go and you hunt a boar with like a spear or something, or just Grauman like throw an axe at it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I like the idea of Grauman throwing an axe at it. <laughs> there you go. Um, and so you, you, this thing will will like does that again? Weird bird motions are. Like, pulling up the, uh, they're ripping off huge chunks of meat. And it's one of those things that as you see, like, as it bites and tears through the flesh and just rips up huge chunks, you can see that even though this thing's innocently trying to eat, it's such a graphic scene, just trying to watch this thing eat. It's reminding you of the experience you just had in the cave. And you realize like this thing has a really fucking powerful beak. So anyways, um, all that happens. And uh, you do bring up the conversation. And you go, oh, what do you, what's your name? And it tells you that they don't do naming conventions or what, anything like yeah, that. Like, it's what, just a bird. What they call you we don't have names that's that's not something that we do oh well you know they call me Grauman you maybe are we give maybe we give you name would you like name I do not know I've never had one okay well I think of name and then if you like name we give you name Okay, and then we'll kind of like pull away from there. Uh, fun thing, uh, giant eagles actually have an eight intelligence, meaning this thing's smarter than Grauman. <laughs> and they have a 14 oh wisdom. Oh my God, it's smarter than Grauman. So it's even w- it's way wiser than Grauman. Do you have a character sheet for it? Um, I'll just toss you the link for uh, the basic okay. one. And, and I'll I can update give you a sheet. Sir Fancy. I already have the Sir Fancy Feather one. I can just update it. There you go. Toss me that. Okay, so okay. moving on. Um, <gasps> All that time without a bird worth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now we have to focus on the other He's area. He's like, I'm going to regret giving you that. That was a look. <laughs> Thunk. Huh? It takes a long time because you might travel on foot or you might use your little magic y itemy thingy 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 to um, uh, sit on the back of a phantom uh, warg. But whatever the case may be, or Ghost Wolf, that's what it's called, Ghost Wolf. Whatever the case may be, it takes a while because you have the soldiers behind you, the remaining 34 soldiers behind you um, following. It takes a long time for you to make your way back to that neck of the woods, all the way back to the spine of the world, and even more so back to Dark Arrow Keep. Is the travel completely safe? No. Uh, it is not. As a matter of fact, so much time has passed since you've left that area, been down here, stayed here, and traveled back. Fall is starting to beset uh, this region of Faerun. Uh, it happens earlier than it does in the other parts. So it's getting colder. The nights are getting chilly. You got to bundle up in the nice furs or whatever that you have. Um, coincidentally, uh, you do have a nice large tent 
that you can uh that's right they get set up from time to time and you can like sit there and look at me smuggle in who's the captain i'm the captain now oh yeah Uh Yeah. um so so uh it it does the nights are getting colder and so that does bring out um different creatures that are trying to shore up their own winter um it's like stocks for their own winter so uh the travel is not without incident um, however, uh, you only saw these orcs fight once before, and sadly it was against Skags when they were caught unaware um, in a place that they weren't too terribly familiar. And so they were kind of getting torn apart pretty pretty easily. Um, they can actually handle themselves extremely well. As a matter of fact, as they're moving forward and as you're traveling and taking on uh, all the things that happen, you actually do come across another troll along the way. But again, they're not idiots. They know where they're traveling. They know this region. And as soon as they see trolls, you see immediately arrows are lit on fire and prepared to shoot at the trolls. The trolls get closer and people are throwing flasks of oil at them. So they're getting covered in oil and being shot with flaming arrows. So they set ablaze and the things are sent off running and screaming. Or the thing. Sent off running and screaming. They, they, they are very well formed and, and whatnot. They uh, take order. You can see from the man that you didn't have killed or anything like that. That kind of allowed you to take the position that you have um when he gives a commands they they jump at the crack of his uh, of his voice they jump at his voice like the crack of a whip um uh, you do have casualties um you lose two more on the way back there meaning you're only arriving with 32 and of those 32 there are several injuries uh that happen sure. because it is a uh, a difficult trek but you do make your way finally back to dark arrow keep and uh when you get there um, approaching the, the, the city, you have uh, the one that's kind of walking alongside of you, uh, Guthtar. Yes, Guthtar! Yeah, you I remember it. it. Good job. <laughs> oh, I rolled a 90 20 on my intelligence check. So Guthtar says, um, says <clears throat> Should I go and speak to them then? I'm assuming he's be talking about speaking to Obold? No, to the guards on the way up. Oh. Uh, sure. I'll I'll nod and send and kind of like just like gesture for him to go forward. Do they not know you? They do, but I am not formally part of Dark Arrow Keep like you are. So if you walk to guard, guard knots question you. Guard just let pass. I would certainly hope so. And if they didn't, um, they can, and if they didn't, they can speak to. Uh, and I'll just I'll rattle off the name of the other brother uh, that I spoke to. Uh, it is B- uh, Brimawell. Uh, Brimawell. Um, so when you give that response, he kind of like nods to that, like satiated. Like you can tell that he was trying to set you up for like a, a questioning trap. And, yeah. And you answered it well enough that he nods. And then uh, he will go off and, and introduce like who it is that's coming through here. So the guards don't like there's people coming with weapons, you know, so they're, they're not on edge. It's their own men coming back. And so he does that. And um, and you guys are able to pass through and you're able to head into the keep. Um, as you guys walk through the walls of Dark Arrow Keep, you can see the place has changed in the past months. There's been construction. You know, there's been a lot of work done. Um, not necessarily that there's new buildings started and finished and flourishing well, nothing like that. But uh, of the buildings that are there, they're in slightly better repair than they were before. Other ones have started, or other ones that were started have uh, gone under enough progress. It's notable. Mm-hmm. You can see the difference. A whole floor finish, something like that. Um, you can see that the uh, guards outside have uh, doubled their post uh, since the last time that you were here. Uh, maybe because of the oncoming fall and and what comes along with that. Um, and you can see the people inside seem a bit more settled, even more so than the last time you were here, and they felt pretty settled before. Okay. The ratio of peoples that you see in here is the same as it was last time. Sure. Um, and you're making your way through the city, heading straight to uh, King Obold. Is that the plan? Uh, uh, I don't know if I want Obold or Brimawell first. Uh, I, to be, to be honest, it'll be smarter for me to, to see Brimawell first. So what do you say, uh, so what is your actual plan when you're inside the city and heading to the place that you're heading? I would just, uh, have one of the people I'm with go fetch Brimawell and let him know that Thonk has returned. Um, hearing you're saying this, he would say, you do not speak to Brimawell. He is not the one that gives orders. It is Obold. Obold is Grumsh. 
Grosh is old. Oh, God, they all fucking say that annoying line. And with that, why don't we take our next sure. and last break, and we'll come back and we'll see how things settle up. All right, sounds good. We'll be back in just a couple minutes, guys. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 